Fantasties is an 1858 novel by George MacDonald, and it is sometimes considered the first adult fantasy novel, but he labeled it, I believe, as a fairy romance for men and women, or maybe that was his publisher, I'm not quite sure. It is told in first person. The story starts with a man awakening, thinking about the day, uh, well, this is before the events of his 21st birthday. When reading a fairy tale to his sister, he is asked by her if there was a place of fairy, and he answered, he assumed so, but knew not how to get there. So first he has a vision from a fairy and a desk he inherited. Um, and so we come to fairyland afterwards. In other words, Lee Stream runs in his room, and following it uh, is the path to fairyland. He first makes his way to a frontier, a mark bordering fairyland. Uh, he meets some women that have some fairy blood, and he discovers that he may have some as well. He reads an Arthurian tale that foreshadows Percival's appearance later and eventually encounters fairy. The young man hunts for the ideal of female beauty, which doesn't sound very far-fetched <laughs> uh, in this type of story, and he finds a marble statue uh, created by Pygmalion. <laughs> Onodos is the main character, a name that uh, means pathless in Greek. Uh, the story fits with the romantic movement. The interest in fairy tales pretty high at the time. Uh, German romanticism, like the works of Novalis, are a big influence here, uh, Goethe certainly had some influence as well, um, I could spot at least while I was reading, and Grimm's and Anderson's uh, well-known works had already been released at this time. Um, our character encounters um, things in fairyland, such as fairies living in flowers, uh, there is peace uh, in beech trees, and the ashen alder are nightmarish. Uh, he eventually has a wide array of experiences, even becoming a knight. Uh, this insert into a fairy tale is very interesting and feels like what we would call portal fantasy or isekai for the cool kids out there. Uh, there is even death and rebirth for Anodos. Uh, it is about gaining and losing, and I can s really see the influence on Narnia as well. Um, Lewis said it was. So, um, uh, I that was proud and humble now, uh, says the rust covered knight Percival. Uh, and, and, and really, this kind of encapsulates uh, the story. It's one of humility. Uh, there's also a shadow that acts as a mundane transformer, making the wonderful and fairy plain and of our world. Uh, the sky in Fairyland is egg-shaped rather than a dome. It is also reflective, <laughs> while water does not reflect. There are odd kobolds and goblins. Uh, there are monsters, giants, castles, squires, knights, um, statues, <laughs> days lasting a year and more. Uh, it's very romantic again, and I found the inclusion of the story of uh, Cosmo uh, an interesting one. Uh, C.S. Lewis, again, marks Fantasties as a huge influence on him. Uh, and Link Carter says MacDonald's poetry is not very good. <laughs> and I'll say, um, it's not the best, but it isn't awful. So, of course, there's some poetry in this story. Uh, the story is allegorical, um, and it's about getting rid of your shadow. So interpret that as you will. I'm not here to make the interpretations for you today. Uh, but it is an interesting novel. You can get this free in basically any form, LibriVox or audiobook, uh, digitally, because it's in the public domain, again, 1858 by George MacDonald. So anyways, it's a nice piece of history. Uh, I'm glad I read it. But, you know, wasn't the most entertaining thing ever. But as a historical piece, it is, it is nice. And as a romantic piece, it's not terrible either. Anyways, Liam from Liam's Lyceum. I'll catch you next time.